This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Want to know what's going on in your neck of the woods and learn the history and the people behind the events that you love across the state? Get to know the real Mississippi. Check out MPB Think Radio's Next Stop Mississippi podcast on all platforms or on the MPB public media app. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. Our host is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician. I'm Jermaine Flood. Hey, Coach. Hey, how you doing? Glad to be I'm back. I'm doing good. Glad to be back. How was your Thanksgiving? Well, you know, I had to go up there and hear all those cowbells up there in uh, Starful. <laughs> so after that, it was great. Do those cowbells bother you? Those cowbells bother me. <laughs> And it's not the ones that the cows wear per se. No, it's those ding 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 The ones that are in their hands. Right. Yeah, I think about 30 teams are bothered by by those cowbells. That's right. They better start adopting their own cowbells. That's it. Counteract those. Well, it's good, Coach. I had a great Thanksgiving. I mean, it was well rested. You always need some time off to kind of recoup and reset. Yeah, me and my wife was able to go to every game that Ole Miss had this year. And so we were on the road every weekend. Yeah. And this is the first weekend that we have not been able, that we have not have had to not go to been a game. On the road. Okay. You know, the, and so we get to rest. Well, she's on call. Yeah. I get to rest. <laughs> If she's on call, you're on call. That is it. You're exactly right. That is it. Well, that's good stuff. Well, on call today is what we're talking about, 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles. Our email address for questions is auto at mpbonline.org. Right now, we've got Mary um, on, but we'll get to Mary in a second. I want to go ahead and start a little bit of talk about our 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles because, Coach, I am obsessed with the idea of 18 wheelers and just thinking about how they work, how they move and when I'm driving beside them, you know, what all goes into getting them down the road. But I'm obsessed. So, you know, I've got a write up. You do have a write up, I'm sure. <laughs> so an 18 wheeler or semi trailer truck is a combination of a tractor unit and one or more semi trailers to carry freight. And a commercial vehicle is any type of motor vehicle used for transporting goods or paying passengers. Well, you think about that. We think as a commercial vehicle, just like you said, any smaller vehicle that carries freight or any larger vehicle that carry freight. Now, in Mississippi, we have, or maybe all over the country, have the same things. We have a Class 5, and those are those bob trucks that you see, those little half trucks okay. that uh, run around town delivering yeah. things to yeah. different stores. Yeah. And then we have the 18-wheelers. Those are called a Class 8 truck. Okay. Okay. In order to drive most of those Class 8 trucks, mm. you got to have a CDL driver's license. That means a commercial driver's license. Okay. Okay. And commercial driver's license on there go from a Class C, a Class D, a Class A, and a Class B. Mm -hmm. So you got all these different licenses for different vehicles. And if you're going across the, the state lines. Yeah. But are you talking about those 18-wheelers? wheelers you know there's so many people that they get beside a 18 wheeler their knuckles get uh blue because they're holding on the steering wheel so hard <laughs> because they're scared either 18 wheelers gonna come mm -hmm. over or they're gonna uh, move over and get mm -hmm. too close mm -hmm. you know and i've been in that same situation where you're going across a bridge maybe they're doing construction that 18 wheelers coming across <sighs> I think a lot of people don't have respect for those 18 wheelers. Okay. And the reason I'm telling you that my dad was a truck driver and that's what I worked on all my life yeah. until I started teaching school and worked on nothing but automobiles. But 18 wheelers, those are, it's a, I think sometimes we had the conception that it's a big monster coming down the road. They think they own the road and they can run us off the road. That's really <laughs> not it. That's how it feels to people that are in smaller cars, though. But yes. Right. But that's not how it is. Uh, I will get, guarantee you those drivers are going to be very safe, yeah. very careful, because once again, you got an 80,000-pound truck mm -hmm. driving mm -hmm. down the highway mm -hmm. at 70 miles an hour, and you got a 5,000-pound car driving at 70, 75 miles an hour. Well, that car is not going to win. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, yeah. and, you know, when you start thinking about how those vehicles operate and what's behind them and what kind of training those drivers, you know, you, you see all the time that you have these pop-up driving schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, mm -hmm. these pop-up driving schools, they do a good job, but the problem is, is that that student has to get behind that wheel and has to drive down that highway right. and put plenty of miles behind them before they can say they're a seasoned driver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that's what we have to be careful careful of. We do have young drivers. Those young drivers got to learn right. just like everybody else. Right. But being careful, watching them, because, you know, we talk about blind spots on our cars. We have blind spots. Those 18-wheelers have blind spots. Mm -hmm. They cannot see you. And they always put a little placard on the back of their vehicle that mm -hmm. says, hey, if, I ca if you can't see my mirrors— I can't see you. Right, yeah. You see that sign that's on the back of the, 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 the trailer. trailer. Yep. Right. You see that sign. And then look, of course, I mean, there's so many parts and pieces that go into driving an 18-wheeler or one of those class vehicles that you've got to know that they've had training or else they wouldn't be able to that's get right. the thing down the road. And we're going to talk about some of those when it comes to maybe the difference between the class fives and the class eights. You gave us yeah. a little bit of that um, size, weight, um, the brakes, the systems. Um, and then I just want to know how tough it is to drive. But oh yes. <laughs> before we get into some more 18-wheeler and commercial vehicle talk, let's hit these phone lines. We've got Mary in Jackson on the line. She's got a 1990 Cadillac Seville question. Mary, you're on with Coach Charlie. Thank you. Yes, I have the 1990 uh, Seville Cadillac that's leaking clear fluid from the passenger side. It looked like water, but it has uh, grease in it. And uh, I took it to Cadillac, but they say they don't work on a vehicle that old because they can't get the part for it. I want to know, sir, please, uh, what is my problem and where can I get it fixed? Is it leaking on the inside of the car? No, sir, it's leaking on the outside. It's on the, in the garage. Okay, and it's like, uh, looks like it's oily? Okay. It is. It's clear, but it's oily. Okay, well, that's most likely is going to be coolant because coolant um, Cadillac and GM used a coolant called Dex Cool. Okay, and that coolant was a orange looking color, but it looks clear on the ground and it's oily. And if it's on the right side, it could just be your uh, heater hose right there on the right side, uh, one of those hoses right there by the uh, firewall. You should be able to take that to. Goodyear, Firestone, or any independent uh, garage in town, and they should be able to fix that because they can still get the parts. They're going to be aftermarket parts. Uh, most most of the time, the dealership does not use aftermarket parts. They use genuine OEM parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Goodyear, uh, Firestone ought to be able to help me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you so very much, Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Miss Mary, thank you so much for giving us a call. Coach, you know it. You be knowing what, what it is. She said clear. She said oily. And you knew what to what it was. That's about what it is, you know. <laughs> That's good stuff. Okay, I want to get back to the 18-wheelers and commercial vehicles talk. Kathleen and Osaka, I see you out there. We'll get right to you. Um, but I want to know. Going back to how tough it is to drive, because we were talking about driving them and riding beside them, I want to know how tough it is to drive an 18-wheeler. It's it's a stick shift, right? It's right. an automatic. So I mean, it's not an automatic. It's a it's a standard. It's a standard. So if you think about it, when you were when I was growing up, I learned how to drive a stick shift. Me too. Okay, so if you know how to drive a stick shift, you can drive one. But where our cars have five speeds, mm -hmm. six speeds. Mm -hmm. These are 18 speeds. I can't count all of those, yeah. Coach. Okay. <laughs> These do, are, do they have the numbers down there? You know, uh, on they, the... they do on the knob. Okay. Okay. So I they're don't eight. have 18 fingers. I well, don't, how do I, I go that I far? Don't, I don't want to go that well, far. Well, what they do, they switch the transmission. They they have a nozzle, and some of them switch electronically. Some of them more air switch. And what they do, they would just switch inside the transmission itself. Okay, from a low to high, uh -huh. you had, and that's really what you have, low to high. Right. Okay, low is when you first start taking off and you're doing the shift and you're trying to pick up speed. Yeah. And then you just continue to go up those gears. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. first of all, you got to learn how to do that with the clutch. Okay. Right. Uh, people have heard double clutching, and double clutching is when you put the clutch in to get it out of gear and then try to get it back in gear. It's your double using the clutch twice. Oh, okay. You've, you've haven't let up off the clutch yet. You haven't really let off the clutch. You're yeah. just where you're just, you're maneuvering. And so once again, learning how to do it, 
you know, an uh, individual if they've never been in a cab of 18 wheeler. Mm. Uh, really, it looks like a, uh, a a house. I, I would say, well. <laughs> It looks more like the cockpit of an airplane because there's so yeah. much there. There's so many buttons and everything that are pushing. Yeah. And most of 18-wheelers have air brakes on them. Okay. okay. And so you you get in there, you got to let your air pressure build up and all that, you know, to 120 pounds of air pressure before yeah. you can release the brakes. And the new electronics that are on the vehicle as well, we were even talking about how to drive the and just shift the transmission. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, it's done, a lot of times it's done with a computer as well. Now you can help you do the computer. Oh, okay. Okay, it tells you when to shift and all that. And what, what gear you're in. Right. I just need to yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you need to see that. But they do make automatic uh, 18-wheel. Okay, I did not know that. Oh, yes, they make automatics. Now, we keep saying 18 wheelers. Do you know why they're called 18 wheelers? Because they got 18 wheels. 18 wheels, but you got 10 on the tractor and you got eight on the trailer. Oh, okay. So okay. there's only 10 on that tractor. Yeah. You know, and so until you uh, hook up the trailer, that's when it becomes they the need 18, to call it 18 wheeler, wheeler. <laughs> because you have the tra- the tractor and the trailer. Right. So if you ever see one with a, where it's just the cab driving around, you can't call it an 18 wheeler anymore. That's called no. a bob. It's okay. just a like your bob telling. I got you. I got you. It's yeah. funny that you talk about how hard it is because you know everyday tech guy back here. There's literally video games that people have made to to mimic how f- hard it is to, to drive, drive an, an 18 wheeler. And you always, you know, we we talk about uh, mirrors and we talk about backup cameras on our cars and everything. Yeah. Well, they're not going to have a backup camera on that trailer. I think we should lobby. We should get a. There's no way. There's no way. Well, you got to understand it's 70 to 80 foot long. Yeah. And that's only a single tractor and trailer. And then to drive them, they also have to take into account the weight that they're carrying. It changes. So you have one truck that may be carrying liquid. Okay, you know how liquid splashes. Yeah. Okay, if they don't have baffles in there, you got some that all the load may get shifted to the front, and now you front heavy. So you got to be very careful. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw the commercial, or not the commercial. You saw the news the other day in Gallatin Street. They had that real low bridge right there yeah. off of Gallatin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eighty, and a bob truck got stuck under it. So you got to worry about how high, high it, it is. is. Yeah, because they're like thirteen feet high, and you need to make sure that bridge is high enough. So you don't get it's, stuck under it. It's not that easy to drive. It's not so that easy to drive. You've got to be a professional, people. So you got to be very careful. And like I say, learning maintenance. Even we even talked about maintenance on this vehicle here. It is astronomical. Yeah. You know, uh, tires. You're talking about you you drive about paying a hundred dollars for a tire on a car. Well, these are. Four and five hundred dollars a tire. Well, that's we're gonna we're gonna get into some of that maintenance talk when we mm-hmm. come back. Let's go to Kathleen and Osaka. She's got a comment on truckers herself. Kathleen, good morning to you, lady, and welcome to AutoCorrect with us. Well, I'm gonna start off with cross ID, which it means what it is, and what it is. I have deep respect for these truck drivers. I know it's complicated, and I know the weight. The problem is on 51 going from the border of Louisiana up through Brookhaven, it's like the Wild West. If you're driving the speed limit, which sometimes on that road is 45, they are on your butt, to put it politely, and you don't know what to do. Because on most of these roads like that in Mississippi, they're built higher than the side. We call that the um, the, the edge of the road down, mm-hmm. there's no escape. Yeah, it's scary. What sort of of action? Do we slow down and let them hit us in the rear, or do we speed up and break the limit just to get away from them? It, it, it's amazing to me how they can um, motivate like that, and yet I get nervous. I pull over to the, well, I get as close to the edge of the road I can, and now they've got those speed bump things, and you don't know what's annoying you more, the speed bumps trying to get away from them or what? Well, you know, they do put, um, a lot of companies do put limiters on these uh, tractor trailers, and they're called governor just like they do on cars, you know, and they usually, according to what company, I always thought about J.B. Hunt that always drives, and I always hated to drive behind a J.B. Hunt because I was the slowest truck out there because it had, <laughs> a, it it had a limiter about <laughs> 62 miles an hour, and that's fast as that truck could go on the highway, <laughs> you know, and the speed limit was still 70 and they were going 62 to 65 you know but 
there are certain companies that put limiters on their vehicles so they can't go so fast. But, you know, you got independent truck drivers, you got uh, truck drivers that work for union jobs and, you know, owner operators. So, you know, uh, you got some professionals just like any other uh, occupation that are going to do what they need to do and some are not. Mm -hmm. Well, should I bring a parachute and try to jump off the side? Kathleen, I'm going to put a sign on the back of your car that says, Kathleen from Osaka is driving this, and y'all need to get up off of her. And I'll just take and get it. Just tell them to back up a little bit. She needs a she needs a Batmobile ejector seat. That's it. Kathleen, I know how nervous it is, especially when you're driving on those roads with no shoulder. And you do feel scared, so I can understand for sure. If I had a plan of action, I don't think be scared, but I don't know what the plan of action is or how mm-hmm. should I handle it. Well, there's really not a plan of action, you know, because, like I say, I don't know if those are loggers that are coming down 51, you know, because a lot yeah. of loggers get stopped. You know, uh, it's just, I reckon just give them respect and they're going to give you respect, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Or either they got to, yeah. maybe they could go around once they get yeah. the clearing, you know. Right, because they're not going to run over you at all. Yeah. Yeah, they ain't going to hit you, Kathleen. At least you got a new French saying, cross ID. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> we do That's now, it. Kathleen. That's right. Thanks, lady. If you've got a question, send your emails to auto at mpbonline.org. We're talking about 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles. Is your car under recall? I'll tell you how you can find out next. You're listening to AutoCorrect with Coach Charlie Melton. I'm Jermaine Flood. If you want even more AutoCorrect, find our podcast on all podcast platforms. Forms for your smart device. Autocorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with the replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Well, here are some recent recalls. Coach, this one's up first because you told me it needed to be up first. Now, <laughs> I say we're going to move it to the top. That's right. All right. So 500,000 um, Honda Accords HRVs are recalled for seatbelts. So this is how it reads, and I have to read it like this because I love the way it's written. The month of November has been an eventful one for Japanese automaker Honda, and not in a good way. Earlier in the month, a loose ball bearing that could cause loss of steering control prompted the automaker to recall a small population of its pilot SUV. In mid-month, nearly 249,000 vehicles from Honda and luxury arm Acura were recalled over potential engine damage caused by an improperly manufactured connecting rod bearing. But now, now, Honda is recalling more than 500,000 Accord sedans and HRV SUVs over faulty seatbelts that may not restrain occupants in the event of a crash. Those vehicles include model year 2023 to 24 Accords and HRVs. The issue is the front seat belt pretensioners, which may be missing a rivet and may not restrain occupants in the event of a crash, increasing the risk of an injury. To resolve, dealers are inspecting and replacing the pretensioners assemblies for free and Honda will begin notifying owners January 8th. So there's that one, Coach. Well, That's that a in, serious one. Well, that one includes my new vehicle. Really? That's right. Oh, that's why you were that's why you were on it. That's why I was right on top of it. Okay. Okay. So you got to take it back in? I will. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then, Coach, what do you say to him? Just get it done. Get it I done. I say get it done. Yeah, get it done. Let me look at it make sure it's taken care of. What's the, I say here's the recall. Coach, who is your mechanic? The dealer? The dealer. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would not want to be your mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he's got a no see you coming. Uh, there's Coach. <laughs> get it together. <laughs> well, the <clears throat> last time I took my vehicle in, uh, it was a new new vehicle. My wife said it was making noise in the brakes. Yeah. And the guy said, well, it ain't making no noise. I said, well, you need to show me. <laughs> so he, he went and put it on the rack, took the wheels off of it, and let me look at it. I said, okay, I'm satisfied. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And put the wheels back on. I good. thought you were going to have to check him. <laughs> oh, I did. I checked the brakes, and he let me see the brakes. He let me look at the wheels. Yeah. He let me look at the rotor. No, I thought something was not going to be right, and then no. you gonna have to check him no i told him <laughs> no i told him it's good to go okay good <laughs> that one worked out the way it should okay subaru is recalling nearly ninety-five thousand eight hundred of its vehicles over an issue that may prevent the reverse lights and rear view camera image from appearing that's going on on a lot of them it's that tech stuff those include model year 2021 cross trek and model year 2022 forester suvs 
as well as, excuse me, <clears throat> model year 2021 to 23 legacy sedans and outback wagons. The issue is with an insufficient well that may allow water to enter the inhibitor switch and cause it to become inoperative. A faulty inhibitor switch may prevent the reverse lights from illuminating and or the rear view camera from displaying. They are replacing this inhibitor switch for free and will notify owners January 8th. Then we've got nearly um, 249,000 Honda vehicles um, involved in an issue with uh, Acura's recalled over potential engine damage. And this is from involving a component that may cause the engine to stall while driving. That includes Honda vehicles, model year 2018 to 2019, Odyssey minivans, and so many more. I cannot read them all here. So make sure you go out there and look at that recall. And then Buick Encore GX um, and Vista Chevrolet tracks are recalled over blank instrument panels. Again, that's probably um, another one of those tech issues. That's 2024's Encore GXs and Vistas and track X SUVs. Um, the software will be updated by the dealer. And then 32,000 plus Jeep Wrangler 4XEs, Wrangler Unlimited 4XE SUVs are recalled over potential fire risk um, that they discovered in eight vehicle fires thus far. That includes 2021 to 22 Wrangler Unlimited 4 XCSs um, and 2023 to 24 Wrangler 4 XCSs following the rebrand. So make sure you get all of that looked at. If you want any more information about this, you can visit the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website, nhtsa.gov forward slash recalls and inputting your VIN or you can find the Safer Car app. We're talking about 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles. We're also taking your repair questions. The email address is auto at mpbonline.org. To get us back started on our 18 wheeler discussion, we're going to go to Buddy and Natchez. Buddy has an 18 wheeler story buddy you're on with coach charlie well thank you. i'd just like y'all to have a whole hour show and uh two hour show instead of one hour show. <laughs> yes sir uh, yeah. and my wife and another couple uh we used to ride motorcycles all across the country and i was kind of referring to the lady that's talking about the 18 wheelers look like they're going to run over well one time up in the mountains we had 18 wheeler looked like one of these long bad dump trucks or something, got behind us on our motorcycles. We were riding side by side and doing pretty good. But uh, on a straight stretch, we'd slow down, try to get him to pass. He wouldn't pass. He'd come right up behind us. I couldn't see anything but a bulldog and a word back. And I'm the rear view mirror. He'd be so close to us. <laughs> That's it. And I got tired. I said, we've done everything we could to get this thing to pass us, so I'm just going to get a Smokey. So I started calling for a Smokey Bear on my CB radio. And after a whole... Almost a minute, one came back and said, oh, you got one, what's your trouble? I said, well, we got an 18-wheeler just riding on behind, so we're on a motorcycle, motorcycles, and if we made a little bobble, he'd run over us before he could get off his brake, or get on the brake. And he said, oh, what's your 20? Well, I see the sign up there, it says some kind of springs. He said, yeah, I'm about two miles back. I think I'll ease that way and check him out. Well, I looked in the rearview mirror, and that truck got to back it up, back it up, back it up. And pretty soon, he was a good distance from us. And I said, uh, uh, Mr. Smokey, uh, I think that guy got his ears on, said he's hearing the conversation, I think. Uh, he's uh, starting to behave himself pretty well. And the guy said, well, you need to be up there. I said, well, if he drives like he's doing now, things going to be all right. We've got no problem. He said, well, I'll be back here. If you have trouble, call me. I'll come up and see what his trouble is. And so I looked over at my buddy. I said, well, you just have a good day, and thank you. And I looked, my bu buddy presses the button on his handlebar and says, yeah, you have a good day, too. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a Smokey Bear on the radio, but I didn't know it. That's the best joke I ever was in and didn't know I was in it. <laughs> but the big thing was the guy in the truck didn't know that it was my neighbor talking to me. <laughs> So, oh, buddy. Out well. so it was a joke on you, but yet it ended up well. It ended up working out. And Kathleen from oh, Osaka, God. buddy, needs that to happen for her. I uh, think that, that worked. <laughs>
That did Thank work. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, buddy. Thank uh-huh. you. That is uh-huh. too funny. Too funny. And Kathleen has me just in stitches now. And we're going to get a fix for her. Um, I'm really crying over that. Um, we're going to stay on the phone lines. I want to go to Alan in Pearl. He's got a recall comment. Alan, you're on with Coach Charlie. Oh, yes. Thank y'all for taking my call. I have a suggestion for anybody out there that's um, taking their vehicle in for a recall and it requires a part. Be sure when you take your, before you take your vehicle, call that dealership and ask them, do they have the part in-house, in stock? If not, you don't wind up like me taking my vehicle there, and then they tell you they don't have the parts. So that's a big inconvenience this day and time. So just yeah. make sure they've got the part if it requires a part before you take your vehicle. Yeah, a lot of people, what they do, they take their vehicle in, they get it put in the service bay, and they look at it, and next thing you know, the service uh, rider comes back and says, well, it's going to be here for a couple of days because we ain't got the part, but we already got it tore down. You know, so you got to be very careful. I know a lady that just, they did a recall on her transmission, said they had to fix her transmission. She took it in there. It's been in there for two weeks because they said they hadn't had the part. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I just... Yeah, because it, it's a big inconvenience for a lot of people. Um, it really is. You know. Yeah. All right. That's all I wanted to say. That's Thank a good tip. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Coach, it's so much between the recalls and the 18-wheelers. <laughs> I've got it going today. <laughs> and look, I wanted to get into some more of our 18-wheeler talk, especially when it deals with size, weight, and the systems. Right. Um, I want to talk about that. Our email address where you can send questions is auto at mpbonline.org. We're talking about 18-wheelers and commercial vehicles between your car repair questions. What's in the news? Well, the video catches dogs ripping cars to shreds at a Houston dealership. These dogs unleashed all kinds of mayhem. I'll tell you more next. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Coach Charlie Melton, retired instructor from Clinton High School's Automotive Technology Program, is our expert host. I'm Jermaine Flood. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. In the news, video catches dogs ripping cars to shreds at Houston dealership and they unleashed all kinds of mayhem. They say it's time to call Sherlock Bones. (laughs) (laughs) I I like like that. that. I knew you'd like that. (laughs) Okay, a pack of what appears to be stray dogs has been hounding a Houston area car dealership and causing as much as $350,000 worth of damage. The owners of G Motors in Harris County, Texas, caught the doggone canines in the act on overnight security footage, ripping bumpers off luxury sedans on the lot, jumping onto hoods, and generally biting, chewing, and scratching up the vehicles on the lot. Sounds like a rough day at the office. It sounds like like they had a beef with that car dealership. Ooh, that's a good one! Had a bone to pick. A bone to pick. They had a bone to pick. (laughs) Maybe they uh, took their food away from them or something. (laughs) That's what happened. $300,000 worth of damage. They did this three different times. Times. Yeah, they this did. This is three different they nights. They came back. So the sales manager said that the damage was done to at least five cars um, in three separate nighttime incidences between November 6th and November 18th. They were on one. Hey, they got their buddies to come back. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they were confident they were in the right place. They, right. they weren't barking up the wrong tree. Right. Oh, here we go. That's, that's there it, it goes. That's it. There it goes. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have to pull these out as a uh, separate uh, audio clips. They initially though guessed that the wolf they were blaming it on the wolf, right? They were like, "This has got to be a wolf," um, but later confirmed it was domesticated dogs who have homes more than likely. Non plan after setting up surveillance cameras, and nobody knows for sure, but it's believed stray cats may be to blame for bringing the dogs to the dealership. Ah, uh, so now they're blaming the cats because the dogs were there. Okay. <laughs> Likely through a gap at the bottom of the exterior fence. And more important, that damaged property um, are employees um, and potential customer concerns now over safety. In any case, the dealership is planning to move to a different location shortly, which will hopefully clear up the not-so-possum situation. 
So you're telling me the dogs are going to chase you out of town. It's a bad part of dog town. That's it. I just want to say, they, they have this whole place fenced in, and the dogs found that spot to come no, in the cats, specifically the cats, every the cats time. Let them it. Do it. Well, still, like, they came through that spot in the fence every time. It is too funny. Listen, I'll include a link to this story in our show's podcast. What What do you think the uh, the owners did when they got there that morning? Did they let the dogs back out? Oh, I don't know. I bet you the dogs was gone. They had to find out who it was. They had to get a whole uh, detective team. So they have no that. idea who let the dogs out. Yeah. You no. Know, oh, there he Ooh. goes. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying bad dog, bad dog. What if, what if they right, had I'm a, done, I'm done, I'm done back here. What if they had a cowbell? Oh, no. Oh, no. This was a good little news story uh, break that we just had. <laughs> but let's get back to it. We're talking about 18-wheelers and commercial vehicles. Email questions to auto at mpbonline.org. Okay, Coach, back to some 18-wheeler talk. I want to talk about the system, size, weight, and brakes. Well, you know, you're talking about an 80,000-pound vehicle driving down the highway when we have a 5,000-pound car. So we 80,000 pounds shift one way or the other. I know you've seen 18-wheelers where the maybe a flatbed had the lumber shift one side or mm-hmm. another, and they turn over in curves and all. All that stuff, they had to be very careful with that because of the weight on those vehicles. Now, they're all operated by air brakes. Right. And I used to work on Consolidated Freight when they were in business. I worked on all their trucks, and they had an air brake called a wedge brake. Okay. It was, oh, it was hard to work on. But most of them have S-cam brakes that are very easy to work on but it's just air operated <clears throat> and you know so when you hear an 18 wheeler and you hear it going all that is, yeah. is air coming out of the oh, brakes, the brakes. Okay. right you know okay so you got so most of them have air brakes and you know when you think about we already talked about how high they are how heavy they are and you know i was thinking about the motorcycles yeah you're coming down out of those smoky mountains and you're coming down if you ever look on the side of the road they have these grades on the side of the road and they're called truck grades Mm -hmm. and what happens they're runaway trucks because what happens the brakes will heat up okay and they lose their slide off and they run up that grade in order to stop the vehicle okay so maybe people didn't know what those were for but that's what those are for the little bumpy bumpy things well no on the side of the highway in mountains you have a grade that Mm -hmm. is made of gravel or and it goes up yeah and what happens the 18 wheeler if they coming down that hill and they can't get no brakes Oh. They had to pull off the road and go at that grade, and that grade will stop slow the vehicle. Slow it down. Slow yeah. it down. Yeah. yeah. Well, it has to stop them because the grade only goes so far. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it don't, then you just slid off of something. And the thing is, you can't, 18 wheelers cannot ride their brakes because what happens, their brakes will get hot just like a car. Okay. They'll get hot and they'll get glazed and they won't stop. Okay. So they use that transmission a lot to slow them down. Yeah. So that's another thing. you got to learn how to drive that transmission and how to slow that truck down. And like I say, we talked about uh, the uh, different systems, the lighting systems on it. Uh, you got lights all over it, Mm -hmm. you know, and really those lights are plugged in from the tractor to the trailer. If you got a bad connection on the – I know you've been down the highway. You saw lights flashing on the back of a truck on the trailer. Well, that's just a bad connection or a bad ground. Okay. And I was always thinking about 18-wheelers, if you look in the cab and the fuse panel, they don't have regular fuses. They have circuit breakers. Mm. And the reason why they have circuit breakers, especially for the lights, is so their lights will come back on. Yeah. They may be off for a couple of seconds just for it to cool off. Right. And they'll come right back on. All right. And you've seen that driving down the highway. Where they come off and on. Where they come off and on. They hit a bump. They come off and on, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, So you got ground systems. You got all these different systems that are working on these vehicles. They're just like cars. They got a lot of automatic and electronic systems now in them. Um, They got catalytic converters on them. They're called particulate filters. You know, um, I used to like to ride down the highway and you see all that black smoke coming out of them. Well, you don't see that no more because they got something just like a catalytic converter, but it's called a particulate filter. Okay. Okay, and then they put that, if you look at diesels, uh, regular on-the-road diesels, they right. use uh, pickup trucks, they use this called DEF. Right. Okay, well, they use gallons of it. And what it is is um, imitation urine, and what it is, it goes into the system. It, once again, cuts down on the smog and all. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. their systems are, some of them are like cars, but a lot of them, you know, I... I don't know about the brand new ones, but if you think about a 18-wheeler, you're talking about 
a hundred and fifty to two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Right. You know, and then you have different types. You have um, if we, you, you know, you let's you said earlier they they look like a big home, a house. In yeah, them. yeah. Well, some of them do have sleepers. Okay, those are the over the road trucks that have sleepers on them. Yeah. And then you have day cabs. Day cabs is the vehicle where uh, you have the tractor and you see it going around town, mm-hmm. and it only has. A do- two doors on it, and you get in and out, and you just drive yeah, the yeah, truck. Yeah, the quickies. Yeah, okay, so those called day cabs. <laughs> not quickies. Yeah, well, they're called day cabs. <laughs> uh, you can call them quickies, I reckon. <laughs> but then you have, uh, so then you have the day cabs, then you have the bob trucks, the bob trucks. The weight on each one of these, if you're over 26,001 pounds, you got to have a commercial license to drive mm-hmm. those. And a lot of times those bob trucks would be about that because okay. they can carry that much weight as well. Okay. But, you know, and then you had to have different licenses. If you have one that's hauling hazard material, you've seen that on the back of the mm-hmm. trucks. You have it had to have an endorsement for that. Yeah. Uh, you got to have an endorsement for if you're doing doubles. Okay. When I talk doubles, that means two the trailers. The two trailers on the back. Yeah. Right. And then in California and Oregon, all them, they have three trailers yeah yeah you know they're smaller right but they're still but three there's trailers. still three of them back there you know so you got to have different endorsements for different uh different certifications to mm-hmm. drive different type of 18 mm-hmm. wheelers mm-hmm. two questions one are the parts and pieces this is what my mind thinks just my you know you know regular mind um are they bigger than regular car parts <laughs> they're all bigger they're they're uh, harder to install i've i've installed uh starters on coming uh 18 wheeler trucks that had a cummins engine in it that weighed 75 to 80 pounds putting the so they are on. big oh yeah okay it's not like little pieces in a big body no no type deal okay second question coach how young were you w- when you started working on these and how i mean how did you even maneuver back then how big were you <laughs> Well, I'm about the same size I am now, <laughs> you know, so I'm not really big. I can, I can imagine Coach is the same person that he was when he was younger. I was the exact same What way. age were you when you started? About 20. Okay, okay. Well, I okay. went to the so military. I learned all my stuff in the military. I went to the military at 18, yeah. and that was my job, to work in a motor pool and that had different 18, because I wanted to drive one. But because my dad was a truck driver, right. so I wanted to drive one, but I decided I'd work on them. Okay, uh, you know, <laughs> I love it. I so. love the history of you and your and the stuff you do. Okay, let's hit our phone lines real quickly. We're going to go to let's go to Brenda and Quitman. She's got a smaller pickup um, question. Brenda, you're on with Coach Charlie. Uh, good morning. My question is: Why do small pickups get not so good mileage, like a a small car gets good mileage. Why why isn't the gas mileage the same? Well, it's really a lot of sometimes it's the aerodynamics. You know, you have a you got a bid on it that traps air. So that's one reason why it doesn't get as good gas mileage, and it's just the way it's built. The transmission is a little bit different than in a pickup truck than they are cars, you know. So really, the way the pickup truck is set up, especially if it's a four wheel drive pickup truck, a small four wheel drive pickup truck, just the, the way they are built, they may have the same engine, but you got to take in perspective of how the wind is hitting that vehicle driving down the highway. I want a small pickup, but I just hate buying all that extra gas, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I'm in a small car. I'm well, like, we're, you. we're lucky right now that gas is getting cheaper on us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Miss Prenta. We're going to stay right quickly on the phone lines. Let's go to Larry and Hazelhurst. Larry, you're on with Coach Charlie. Yes. Uh, I have heard that gasoline has different additives in the cold weather and uh, winter and the uh, hot weather of summer. Uh, is that true? Uh, yeah, you have a winter grade and you have a summer grade. And what it is, the summer grade, uh, it really is more of the oxidation they put in the uh, fuel because, like say, colder, uh, you, you, you're you trying to get the fuel weather at night easier. Okay, just like it's a warm blend. If you have a warm blend, you don't have, it don't have as much of I would say the, they distill it just a little bit different, so it's not so oily, so it will ignite better. And so winter, everything gets cold and thicker, and so they got to change that blend to make that uh, fuel uh, where it's not as thick. Well, I sure get better mileage. I have a 19 Avalon, 
And I literally get from 40 to 50, very rarely 50, but 48 regular. Come on now. Island. Come on now. That's and, good. You know, <laughs> that is it's good. A it's, right. a, it's a hybrid. Right. And, uh, but overall, you know, the dash tells me that it's gotten 40.3 since it left the factory. Uh, but during the summer, I'm doing good to get 37, 38, sometimes 40. Yeah, that would say it's the difference with how they're blending that uh, oil and that fuel in order to refine that fuel. It's just a little bit different. That's the reason. It's not that they're trying to blend it where in the summertime you're not getting just as good gas mileage. It really is they're trying to fix it in the wintertime where the fuel is not so thick and that it can uh, flow better. Make a lot of sense. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. We're discussing 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles. Between your repair questions, you can send an email to auto at mpbonline.org. We've got a new car review from Casey Williams coming up in Coach's Tip of the Week. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Here's a new car review from Casey Williams. It's Auto Casey on AutoCorrect. This week, we're going to start with the price tag $107,390. That is the price for a 2023 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. The question is, is it worth it? Well, on the outside, you get all the chrome and style you'd expect in a vehicle costing over $100,000. 22 inch wheels, big chrome grille, power hatch, power running boards, looks really nice. Inside, all the luxury you'd expect in a vehicle costing that much money. It has heated and ventilated massage seats in the front, heated and massage seats in the middle row. It's got the Rebel audio system, tri-zone automatic climate control, and all the safety equipment. Underneath of it, a powertrain to match. A 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 delivers 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, very quick. Gas mileage is not bad. 16 miles per gallon in the city, 22 on the highway. So, all the way around, it's a very nice vehicle for a price. And the question is is it worth it against Mercedes, Infinity, and Cadillac? If you like Lincoln's, you'll like this one a lot. See the full video on his YouTube channel, Auto Casey, and listen to AutoCorrect on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. This is AutoCorrect. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show from autocorrect.mpbonline.org. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Stay tuned after the show at 11 a.m. It's Southern Remedy Kids and Teens. I'm Jermaine Flood. Our expert is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician, and it's time for his tip of the week. You know, as we're talking about these 18 wheelers driving down the highway, I just tell you, hey, give them the respect, share the road with them, and so they can share the road with you because we don't want you running off on no curve and we don't want them running off on no curve. So just be careful out there. Show respect in both directions. That's right. And listen, because Coach loves 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles and diesel engines so much, next week, we're continuing this discussion. That's right. <laughs> we're going to get more into it next week. Let's hit the phone lines one last time. We've got Greg and Columbus on the line. Greg, you're on with Coach Charlie. All right. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. I got a 2000, I got a 2006 hour frontier. I pulled my um, zero turn with um, the lights. The signal lights work on the right of the trailer. Also, it work, works on the left. When I hit the brakes for the trailer, it lights up. But when I just cut my lights, I don't have any tail lights at all. What what can cause that? Okay, most likely you have either, you know, where it plugs into your uh, truck. You got the uh, yeah. trailer plugged into the truck right there. I would yeah. check that pigtail right there and uh, check the connection right in there because that's usually where your problem is. What it's doing is grounding out before it gets to the other uh, light, and that's why it's uh, cutting the other light on because it, you know, uh, electricity is going to go to the shortest path, less resistance. Okay, okay, I got you. So what I'll do is just okay, make sure I'm, you ain't got a wire touching something and check that pigtail real good and check that where it goes in. I appreciate that, man, all the time. Okay, thank, thank you, so you much. Greg. Thank right. you so much. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Coach, before we get to the end of the show, I want to talk go back to maintenance on 18 wheelers and commercial vehicles. Here's the thing. If you're dry, if you're the driver of usually the 18 wheeler, you have to usually do your own maintenance, don't you? You just don't take it around to the shop, do you? They have shops around that just does that. You get them done at truck stops, you get them done at the Freightline dealer or the Peterbilt dealer. You have to go usually go to a dealer unless there's an independent shop that does diesels. And you do a lot of them on your own like I yeah. say. <laughs> I think people have misconception. A diesel is made to continually run mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. The only time that diesel should really be stopped is when you're doing maintenance on it or if you got somebody that says you can't idle. Okay. 
okay, and the manufacturer has made it where it cuts off in three minutes just right. like they do buses. Right. But a diesel is made to run continuously. Okay. You know, and so maintenance, and I was thinking about maintenance, you know, uh, some of these diesel engines, 15 gallons of oil, where you would got four or six in a car. Yeah. 15 gallons. Can you imagine trying to drain 15 gallons? You know, we gripe about a $60 oil change. How about a three or $400 oil change? Right. <laughs> That's for real. That's for- Listen, we're going to get into more diesel talk next week, so you're going to want to come back here, same time, same place. But that'll wrap us up for today's AutoCorrect. Our show engineer, Abram Nanny, call screener Charles Arnold. For Coach Charlie Melton, Master Technician, I'm Jermaine Flood. Thanks for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit MPBOnline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen.